Good morning, guys, and welcome to today's edition of the London Session Open. Today is October 1st, uh, 2019, and it's uh, almost 10 minutes past 7 a.m. in London when I'm doing this market update. We're doing this as a recording today uh, to be able to uh, present this earlier to you than usual. Uh, let's take a look at the euro, and then, of course, we're going to go through all the different markets like GBPUSD, dollar yen. Uh, crude oil, gold, S&P 500, and the DAX 30. Uh, all of this, of course, to give you guys a nice little overview of what's happening in the market. Today as well, we're going to talk about the Aussie dollar, uh, the uh, RBA, which is the Central Bank of uh, Australia, cut interest rates overnight, uh, and that caused the Australian dollar to soften. All of this is, of course, uh, for now at least, uh, in the Aussie dollar in line with uh, our outlook for the fourth quarter uh, and that's something you can download directly on investingcube.com when you land on the page uh, you can see it on the top right on the desktop if not you can just go through the menu if you're on a mobile so what's going on here with the euro so the dollar is actually doing quite good and the dollar is strengthening substantially against many different markets and uh, most of the time at least lately you have these strong declines and then strong corrections uh, Right now, though, it's a little bit different. Gold is down quite a bit. Uh, the euro dollar is down quite a bit. So the, the, the dollar is sort of slowly gaining and gaining against many different markets. Uh, has the market started to trend again strongly? Maybe it has. Uh, I doubt it for now. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue to be bearish as I have been. The last sort of solid setup was to sell up here. Um, but and, and, and I'm gonna wait for a pullback so I wouldn't try to chase this the only sort of very good setup if you really want to sell dollars would have been to short or buy dollars would have been gold yesterday that would have been a really good one so what's the outlook for the euro USD now so we still have this which looks like a funny looking inverse head and shoulders with a head left and a right shoulder I do know of course that it's a reversal pattern and that's something you'll find here but it still is useful for trading so that gives us a target of 108.52 so that's probably going to be the next target of traders now i think if, if people that want to short they're still going to focus on something on like this high up here and they put some fibs like this and they're going to probably say well if the market goes up to something like uh, 109.45 i think around that level they're quite happy to sell at the same time you put a fibs here and as you can see here, you know, the market, because this is sort of the last interesting high, um, you know, we, we can of course correct, but we shouldn't really correct all the way up here. I think we can lower that trend finding level a bit, and that improves the risk reward ratio. So the level I'm watching here is the, let me see if I can pinpoint that, uh, well, oh, 0.0945. So that's what I would look for. Might feel very, very sort of uh, something that's not going to happen now, but we just need to wait for that pullback. Here's the GBP versus the USD. Talked about a head and shoulder share as well just a few days ago. The market traded down lower here. I traded this little piece myself. This will move to the downside. I still think we're going to go lower. I don't think we're going to have a no deal Brexit on October 31st. Um, I think we just need to go down more on technicals than anything else. I'm going to stick with my idea because as you can see here, we reached this level on Friday and we haven't really changed since then. The market did try to go upwards, unfortunately not high enough uh, to trigger, um, to reach my cell phone really. Here's the dollar versus the Japanese yen. So the dollar has done, as I said before, quite good and it's sort of pushing its limits. And I'm going to show you the dollar index in a minute or so uh, to explain what I mean. Um, and let me just do something. And here as well, I continue to be bearish. And I've been bearish here for quite some time because I do think the world economy does not warrant um, a, a yen that is weak the way it is right now. There has, however, been some improvements. The Caxin market PMI, so that will be the Chinese PMI figure, which is done by the private sector. That one actually ticked up a bit. Uh, published overnight uh or yesterday on sunday night and that shows slightly better numbers in, in china than than before so it looks at least for now that the chinese economy is stabilizing 
and what happens in China tends to um, sort of create an effect on the rest of the world. So maybe we'll see some stabilization. People, because they have cut interest rates in the US and Europe, the lower interest rates and QE in the case of Europe should cause the PMIs to go higher. But most people say we're probably looking at March. Now, the next step here, though, is more what's going to happen. Uh, you know, how will the economic slowdown, say, in Germany, but also in the U.S., affect the unemployment market? And the unemployment market tends to be the sort of the final leg here, which tends to get hurt. And that, obviously, we have the ADP report coming out on Wednesday, and then you have the NFP on Friday. Uh, the estimate by economists just uh, uh, over the weekend was at 1,000, 400,000 new jobs. If the unemployment rate goes below that, so maybe like uh, 95 or something like that, or below 100, then that would effectively cause the unemployment rate to go upwards. Now go through your charts, see how the unemployment rate, when it bottoms out, starts to go upwards, how that tends to create a major high in stock markets. So I think that could potentially be something that's gonna influence traders. And that again can boost the yen now this is not my preferred setup. I've talked about it before. CAD yen, Aussie dollar yen, and things like that. It's what I prefer. Also in the quarterly outlook. Let me see, I can show you that one. I don't know if you can see it. We can barely see it. Uh, but up here, uh, to the right, you can see it. You can also just go via the menu, quarterly market forecast, and download the report. Uh, moving along here. So what's the next step here then? Well, obviously I've been bearish here for quite some time and it's not really working out. So I would not engage directly here, uh, even though it's possible to sell here. My trend of funding level is at 108.49, but again, the market is stubbornly just trading upwards. But I, I, would, I was guessing that this was gonna go down, but as always, we enter one level, try to risk less than what we're looking to make. Uh, and we do that continuously, then that will uh, has at least put me in a profitable path. Um, we'll talk about the Aussie dollar as well, right? So this is the Aussie dollar versus the USD. So what happened here is that the market ahead of the event had priced in a rate cut with about an 80 to 81% probability. Now they cut and it cost, unfortunately, well, it cost a spike to the upside. Unfortunately, I mean, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, we did actually reach the sell zone Unfortunately, you didn't know about the sell zone because I don't usually cover the Aussie dollar in the free webinar. I cover it for um, my members. And here, we actually touched the sell zone on Thursday. And as you can see, we almost touched the same level on Friday. And here, unfortunately, we didn't go all the way up. What I can tell you here, though, they cut interest rates and they're looking to cut interest again, potentially. And that's what a lot of the big banks like Westpac has been saying and Westpac is a big bank in the region and they command a good insight to the Aussie and New Zealand economies. And I reckon here, this is probably gonna trade slightly lower. Um, and we're gonna go down maybe to 66.83. Probably see some profit taking there. I think you could actually even push this down a bit like that. Uh, Gonna push this down a bit further. Actually, I think we could probably do like this. So if we have correction up to 67, 51, then 51, that's what I'll be looking at. You might say, what's gonna push that up? Well, you never know. You might have a bad note from payrolls on Friday and the market's gonna be at 68, 20. So again, a bit like the Euro, feels like, well, we're never gonna reach those levels. Well, a, we could easily reach those levels uh, in the right circumstances. It just flips from one minute to another. So when we reach these levels, we can make a decision if we actually want to engage. Um, let me see here. US oil is definitely under pressure. It's quite interesting to see how the market uh, recaptured all of its losses on the back of the Saudi crude oil attack. Um, I think here going forward, you know, the trend is, as you can see, short-term bearish it has reached the, these levels here where I suspect they will bottom out. However, right now the market is still creating these uh, lower and lower highs. So the negative momentum is actually quite strong, uh, but we are sort of reaching, we have already reached oversold levels here. 
so this marker should start to stabilize in this area just look for some candlestick or some other formation that can tell you this kind of bottom out and i think realistically maybe in the next few weeks we might go back up to 60 56 82 maybe a bit higher but i don't think we're gonna go far uh song straight within this range and then again, I will be very careful with the NFP on Friday. If that number is negative, it will probably weaken this. And gold prices. So this is would have been an excellent opportunity to short gold and buy dollars. Nice, beautiful head and shoulders. Left shoulder, right shoulder, head. We talked about this. I even posted an update on this on my Twitter at AlexFX00. And as well, I put this on uh, Investing Cube all for free. Um, nice uh, inverse head and shoulders. The market now could potentially decline to 14, 15. That is what I would be looking at. And if we revisit the breakout point, I think people are going to sell. I think it's perfectly fine just to be bearish below this level here, which is the 1507.82 level. S&P 500, well, it's not really working out too good. Um, so I'm bearish. I was already bearish from here went to my favor and then went up again and then moved back into my favor and then moved back into sell zone again fortunately the way we're going to look at we're going to look at the dax now it traded above shouldn't find any level and i think the same thing is going to happen here unfortunately i think i'm going to go up a bit but then that's going to be it so a bit like the german dax which as you can see here cut through this level it's now up here now i published i published an outlook on the german dax and um uh, put that on ADVFN on their homepage and I'm looking at this from a bigger perspective trying a perspective and the market again started to reach overbought levels we're very close to these levels and I reckon we need to take out the July 25th high um, let's see which is the 12,606 level before turning more bullish because when we take out this level we take out that trend line and we will not be in this triangle anymore and that is interesting right now it can still just be it's gonna go up and then spend a few weeks here and then probably go lower again uh we'll see if the nfps are good then and we see some more stabilization maybe in the economic indicators you know that can warrant a bullish move in the next few weeks and months but for now you know, the way it looks like uh, I will still assume that stock market is going to try to catch up with the bad data we'll see the technicals are going to guide us uh, and then we can take decisions when and if we take out this high as for this in the very short term um, again we just at the highest people sold here on September 20th and September 13th so this is a good little spot to book some profits and support is down here right now our problem is always going to look at the dollar index so let's take a look at that so the dollar index has been confusing for most people me included for a very long time um and the reason is that you have like a break to new all-time high and then it just comes back down and then tries to go up and then goes all the way down so sort of if you get rid of this you can definitely see there's an uptrend but you have it's full with false breakouts um and i wish i would have discovered this andrew's pitchfork earlier because you can see it's done a very good job explaining the price action here though less good because the price was not capped so you can see how the blue line has capped the price one two three four five six seven now on the eighth time the market actually decided to go upwards um so there's seven times here and then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14 times more or less, it actually stayed within this channel. The few other times the market moved down to these levels here. I suspect we might go up now then a bit more to something like 106 or so, and then we'll see what happens afterwards. I think probably it will try to peak at slightly higher levels. There is an incentive of the central bank, it's not the central bank, of President Trump to keep the dollar in check, as he usually would do. And he might even send us a tweet this early morning 
when he wakes up uh, in New York, so in Washington D.C. Okay, uh, we'll see what happens for now. People are buying dollars, you know, you got the price of gold probably trade lower. Makes perfect sense for the next few days. You have a few other setups as well. Uh, Euro dollar again, a slightly oversold. I'll probably wait for a little bit of a bounce. Same goes with the GBP USD and dollar yen. I wouldn't try to fight it. And then you have S&P 500 and the German DAX, which you know were bearish for a few days, and now suddenly they're all bullish. And I would ignore the all yen. I would ignore German DAX, and I would ignore uh, the S&P 500. And if you want to trade something else. Or if you want to trade crude oil, again, you need to be a bit careful. Give it a few more days, I think, to stabilize. Otherwise, you have all the other markets, which, again, makes perfect sense. You just need to wait for the right entries, uh, unless you're not already short gold. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap things up. I want to thank you so much for watching. We're doing this earlier today, and the reason for that, again, is that I'm publishing a lot of content on investingcube.com, and I'm trying to find time where I can do both the webinar and the articles both unfortunately require the same time which is the morning and that's why i'm doing this update here early early today so hopefully you can take part of my market updates uh and sort of in the early morning instead in the afternoon not afternoon but early uh around midday let me know what you think please leave a comment in the section below and don't forget to like the video and don't forget to share thank you and see you tomorrow goodbye